Welcome to another video. This is the large A asymptotic, which we also call the Laplace asymptotic. And all it says is, whenever you have the upper incomplete gamma, and the value of A is very large, and the value of S is very small, it is okay for you to say that we don't need to integrate this, we just need to replace T with the value of A in this integrand, and that would be the value of our integral. It's an approximation, but it's a very close approximation, so you can assume equality. Let's get into the video. The best way to approach this is to understand that whenever we are integrating with respect to t, all the values of t we're going to have in this integral will be starting from a all the way to whatever the upper limit is. In this case, it's infinity. So it's okay for you to say, let t be a plus something, okay? That something is anything you add to a. Well, it's possible that you didn't add anything. So t must be some value that is greater than or equal to zero. So it's okay to recognize that u will be greater than or equal to zero. Did I say t? I meant u. u has to be an addition to a, right? Or, or nothing added to a, but the minimum t can be is a because that's the lower boundary, right? The lower limit of integration. Now, um, because A is being treated as a constant now, this is what is going to be changing. We can do a change of, um, let's, let's differentiate. DT will be, if you differentiate this, it's going to be with respect to U on the other side. So we're going to have DU. Mm. And now, our integral, so we have this to be I. Let's have our integral now defined as the integral starting from zero to infinity because now we are integrating with respect to u, okay? The smallest value of u is zero and that's what we're going to have. But now what we have in this expression, t will now be a plus u to the s minus one and this would be e to the negative t, but t is a plus u and our dt equals du. Okay, we have done our change of variables. All we need now is just algebraic manipulation. Okay. Now I'm gonna do two things at the same time. You see this guy here, it's e to the negative a times e to the negative u. That's a way to write this. So I'm gonna say this is equal to on this side, I'm going to write it as e to the negative a times e to the negative u du. This one. Now, this guy here, I'm going to write as from zero to infinity, but I'm going to factor out the a so that I have a times one plus u over a. This a can take this s minus one, and one plus u over a will also take s minus one. Let's do it here. So here we have, let's write one more line here. So here we have the integral from zero to infinity of a to the s minus one, one plus u over a to the s minus one, e to the negative a, e to the negative u du. Okay, so now I can take anything that doesn't have u all the way to the back. I'm taking this guy to the back, and I'm taking this guy to the back. So the integral we're dealing with is now whew, a to the s minus 1 e to the negative a. So that what is left is now the integral from 0 to infinity of um, this guy has u and this one has u. Okay, so it's going to be e to the negative u times 1 plus u over a to the s minus 1 du. 
Now, whether you do integration by parts or you do the binomial expansion of this guy, what's going to happen, which is what's going to happen actually, <laughs> okay, if you, because you keep differentiating this and integrating this, okay, because this is the one you're going to differentiate. If you use the DI table, you're going to end up with a long chain and you will always have u over a, u over a, but we don't want to go th that way. What I want to do is do the binomial expansion of this. The binomial expansion of this, notice that 1 plus u over a raised to s minus 1 is actually approximately 1 plus s minus 1 times u over a. Do you remember this? This is the binomial approximation, Bernoulli's inequality, okay? Um, actually, this is a good approximation of this if this quantity is very small. If u over a is a very small quantity, then this approximation is allowed. In fact, encouraged. In fact, the equality is assumed in most cases. Do we know whether u over a is a very small number? Yes. Remember that the whole idea of this large a asymptotic is a is a large number. In fact, a is ap approaching infinity and u is just a tiny little number added to a. So the ratio of this to this is a very, very, very small number which justifies this. We could go this way. Another way we could do actually, which is the explanation for this, if you do the binomial expansion of this, uh, C, 1 plus u over a raised to s minus 1. The first term is going to be 1 to this, which is just 1. And then it will be followed by this term, which is going to be plus s minus 1 times u over a. The next term is going to be s minus 1 times s minus 2 times u over a squared plus this will continue. The exponent here is going to continue. This is going to keep going s minus 1, s minus 2, s minus 3 for the next one. And this is going to be cubed and it's going to keep going like that, like that, like that. The problem is u over a is a very small number. So no matter what number this is, u over a will reduce it to almost nothing, especially as a approaches infinity. Every term containing u over a will go to zero. So we can say that as a approaches infinity, u over a approaches zero. So this whole thing of expansion is going to be just one. Then, 1 plus u over a raised to s minus 1 is approximately 1 because all of these will go to 0. So we can go back to the original integral and say, therefore, the integral, let's just stick to this integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u times 1 plus u over a to the s minus 1 du is basically the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u du because this guy is going to be 1. And we know how to integrate this guy. If you integrate e to the u, you get, sorry, e to the negative u, you get e to the neg negative e to the negative u. Okay, so which is equal to negative e to the negative u evaluated from 0 to infinity. I know this is an improper integral, but I don't have time to change anything. We're just going to plug in infinity this time. So if you plug in infinity here, you're going to get 0. If you plug in 0 here, you're going to get minus minus 1, which is equal to 1. So this integral here, this guy here, which we just computed, is just 1. So we can say i is equal to a to the s minus 1 e to the negative a multiplied by 1, which is what we claimed. Oh, maybe I should have been using the approximation, 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 approximation. 
So let's say, let's say this is approximately, let's say this is, uh, okay, which is equal to, we, we don't care. So I is approximately this quantity, which is equal to A to the S minus one E to the negative A plus C. No, I don't care. <laughs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.